right, guys, I got a really special video for you today. We're here in the town of Mashpee, Massachusetts on Cape Cod. We're going to be checking out the Mashpee Wampanoag Indian Museum. We'll begin by learning a little bit about the Wampanoag people. Then we'll head inside the museum where we can check out some Native American artifacts found right here in Mashpee. Afterwards, we'll head outside where we can take a look inside an authentic wigwam, or we too, as the Wampanoag call it. And finally, We'll take a look over at the fish ladder on the edge of the property and see if we can spot some herring. But before we get started, if you'd like to help support the Wampanoag tribe, you can do so by clicking the link in the description. It will take you to their website, then click Donations in the upper right hand corner. There was an estimated 65,000 Wampanoag people living in the area before the first white settlers showed up. Sadly, that number dwindled down to just 400 at one point due to war and disease. Thankfully, they've begun to bounce back, and today there's as many as four to 5,000 Wampanoag people living in the area. Now, back to the video. The Wampanoag, also known as the People of the First Light, were spread throughout what is referred to now as Massachusetts and Rhode Island. The name People of the First Light refers to the Wampanoag's eastmost location, where the sun rises, thus offering the first light. The Wampanoag are seasonal people moving between fixed sites, spending summers on the coast and the harsh New England winters under the cover of the inland forest. Corn, or maize as it's called, was the staple of their diet, supplemented by fish and game. All right, so we've made our way into the museum. Let's take a look around at some of the artifacts. Here we see some fishing sinkers. You'll notice these are on loan from the Wampanoag tribe. I believe some of these pieces were found right here in Mashpee, making them potentially thousands of years old. On the right is a piece of a pipe. Now if you've ever seen a Native American pipe, they're generally long wooden shafts with a stone pipe at the end. Here are a couple rubbing stones. These had many uses. They could be used to sharpen things such as arrowheads or to grind seeds and grains into a flour. Here we see a plain gouge. I'm not exactly sure what that is for. And here are some nut mortars. Again, this would be for grinding, uh, maybe for medicinal purposes if you wanted to grind up herbs and spices. Here are some pieces from soapstone pots. These look like they may have been found in the area as well. And on the right, a more modern piece. What's interesting about this, it was made by one of the Wampanoag tribe members. So even though it's more modern, it's just as authentic as the rest, as it's built on tradition that goes back thousands of years. And here we see some harpoon spear points. The one on the left here looks as if it's made of bone. The Wampanoag that participated in the whale hunt were enormously brave and super athletes with incredible balance on the water. Traditionally, they honored them by adorning each with a whale tail pendant. This way, everyone could immediately identify them as members of the whale hunting society. Here we see some 19th century scrimshaw carvings on whale bone, possibly used for letter opening. Wow, just look how detailed and intricate those drawings are. Some more recent items here as well. A beautiful pot again. Um, we have a basket and some spoons. A wooden stirring paddle. Here we see a cranberry sorter. For thousands of years, cranberries were an important food source for the Wampanoag people. Sassamanush, or sour berries, were easily stored and helped families survive the winter. Pemmican is a native food made of animal fat, ground game meat such as deer or moose, and berries. They also used cranberries for dyeing fabric and treating wounds. They are a rich source of vitamin C, which help protect whalers from scurvy on their long journeys at sea. Whaling is an important part of coastal life. A whale offered many resources, such as food, bone, and of course, blubber, which could be used to make oil for light and heat. Here we see a ceramic cutout of a pilot whale vertebrae. And this is a wrought iron ship caulking tool. This would be used to fix the deck of the ship. They would hammer the rope in between the cracks in the deck. Here we see a whale ivory handled walking cane. Again, they would use the bone from the whale um, to make this craft piece here. So it provided many resources. The whale was a very important and vital part of their survival here on Cape Cod. And here we see a blubber knife. Wow, that's really interesting. Now, that's all for the inside of the museum. Let's head outside and take a look inside of the Witu. 
On our way outside here, we stumbled across an old dugout canoe. Now these would have been made from white pine, chestnut, white oak, or tulip poplar, using the burn scrape method. Essentially, the top layer would be burned, and then the charcoal would be scraped out using stone. Burn, scrape, burn, scrape, and so on. So now we're going to get to take a look inside the Wee Tube. Now this structure was built by the Wampanoag tribe people of today. So this is an unauthentic Wee Tube, and it's built exactly how they would have built it for thousands of years, harvesting the raw materials right from the forest around them. Now the first thing that strikes me when I enter here is how well packed the dirt is on the floor. It's very hard. You could even sweep it clean. Now you can see how they layered the bark of the tree like shingles over the top. And there's a fireplace here in the middle. Just above there's a hole in the top of the wee too for the smoke to exit. And you can see on display here they have all sorts of animal skins. This is really an amazing little structure. It's so cozy inside here. And of course this would be full of people. There would be more than just one family in here. There would be a community sitting, living in these different Witus in a small village here in the area. Here we see some craft pieces. There's uh, some straw dolls made there and some carvings um, out of stone and uh, what looks like bone there. That is almost looks like a sewing kit, I believe, made from bone. We'll take a walk around here. We can see all these different deer skins. They look like deer, I believe. Not a lot of wildlife on Cape Cod today. Of course, it's a man-made island now. They've built a canal. Two bridges only to get on. In the summertime, it's unbelievable, the traffic now. It's a very popular tourist destination. And if you're here visiting, I definitely recommend that you check out the museum. This is really cool. If you notice along the wall there, there's some other items hanging as well. Some satchels and different handmade items. Up ahead, we have some raccoon skins. And what looks to be an iron pot. They, of course, did a lot of trading with the white man when the settlers first came. Here we see uh, some arrows. Hunting was, of course, very popular. Source of food, um, as well as the whaling that I mentioned earlier. Here I'll show you a bit how they've tied it together with some rope that they've made. It's very sturdy shelter, and it needs to be. Of course, we're here in New England on Cape Cod, right on the water. Um, the seasons are very stark here. You have a very harsh winter, beautiful summer and fall and spring, but the winters can be brutal, so you really need a nice warm shelter in order to survive. Now if we take a look down here at the fireplace, you can see they've got a pot hanging over for cooking. Um, another mortar and pestle like we saw inside the museum here. Outside here we can see a little bit how the structure of the building is made. Again, you'll notice they did it like shingles overlapping each other. Alright guys, so here we are on the edge of the parking lot. There's actually this fish ladder here that you can check out. Just across the street there's a small pond and the fish ladder helps them navigate their way past that. I believe it's herring that um, are coming through here. I'm not 100% sure. Um, probably all sorts of fish, but these here I think are herring. Maybe you can tell me. I'm not sure. There's a whole bunch of them though. A whole school of them. <laughs> you could almost just reach your hand right in there and grab one if you wanted to. Well, that's going to do it for this video, guys. I sure hope you've enjoyed. And don't forget to go to the link in the description. Head on over to the Wampanoag Tribe's website and make a donation. It would be greatly appreciated. Once again, thanks for watching.